Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, students, alumni, and guests from the outside about things going on uh, in the world and things that are going on at the Delaware State University. Today we're going to focus on uh, an area of student safety and campus safety. And today I have a Lieutenant Joy Simmons here from our Delaware State University Police Department. Joy, thank you for being on the show. It's my pleasure. And before we get started, I feel like I should explain this, this uh, picture behind us. This is a group of folks that work for the Delaware State University Police Department and they are observing Denim Day. And what is Denim Day, you ask? Denim Day is a day, uh, an observant that was started like 20 years ago in Italy and it was started because uh, of a case where the Italian Supreme Court overturned a rape conviction because the justices in, the, in that case felt that there's no way that the victim could have been raped because she wore tight jeans. And there's no way the rapist could have gotten the jeans off of her to commit the rape. And that started uh, protests in Italy and that spread to the world. Now we have Denim Day. Uh, in Italy and throughout the world, and we observed it here. But we're going to talk about sexual assault, and uh, I want to talk about the ways students can stay safe, okay, uh, from this issue. Um, talk to me about your perspectives on that. So my perspective on it um, today, Carlos, I would like to look at it from a wellness perspective, okay. where it is important for an individual to have a self-awareness and an awareness of their socialization mm -hmm. and an awareness of their environment. Mm -hmm. Meaning that an individual should know that they should know their limitations. Mm -hmm. And we're not, it's not a secret that alcohol is a part of, you know, mm -hmm. college life. Yeah. Oftentimes, uh, even though we're a dry campus, even though we are a dry campus, mm -hmm. Alcohol often is a part of college life for some students. Mm -hmm. And so having an awareness of how alcohol affects mm -hmm. you as an individual and making sure that you are practicing uh, safety uh, and precautionary measures when choosing to drink, mm -hmm. whether it's socially or on your own. And I'm saying that because it is known that alcohol is the biggest date rape drug. Mm -hmm. uh, a long time ago, uh, roofies is what it, they were called were a concern for date rape um, as a date rape drug, but it is more, more commonly used than not is alcohol. And mm -hmm. college campuses are often places where individuals normally explore with alcohol um, for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so it is important to have a self-awareness of your ability and your limitations and ensuring that you're safe. Now, now you made me think of, and this is a painful subject for many people, but mm -hmm. the case of Bill Cosby. And in the cases of the women that, that accused him of sexually assaulting him, a common thread that took place in those encounters is that uh, Bill was, was reportedly going back to mix a drink for them or give them something that they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But because he was Bill Cosby and um, he, they, they just, they drank whatever they gave him, they took whatever they gave him, and then they were knocked out, okay? <clears throat> How often do you see this within the college context? I would say that, that to me, that is, could be parallel to acquaintance rape. Uh, knowledge of uh, the offender um, is often reason to uh, kind of put your, your guard down. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, uh, a victim is traumatized or harmed by someone who she knows or mm -hmm. he knows. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, Bill Cosby was familiar to those people. And oftentimes, I'm going to say, because it's Bill Cosby and I have a little bit of knowledge of, of the case, that that's also a, a situation where there's power and mm -hmm. control involved. Yeah. And so he being a person who had a lot of power and could control and manipulate a situation to be whatever it was that he wanted it to be for many reasons. Um, for the victim, it could be they didn't want to lose their position or their ability to work with him or to say they had association with him or just because they were flattered by even the opportunity to be in his presence or to have 
casual time alone with him. Okay, but let's bring this down to the college level now, yes. because power is still a, 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 an aspect of this here. Yes, uh, it you, is. You have a, maybe a young freshman mm -hmm. who gets to know a senior, mm -hmm. uh, a, a guy that seems to know his way around campus very well, seems to be very intelligent. Power could come into play there, couldn't it? It sure can. Another, another um, situation of power and control on a college campus, especially since you referenced freshmen are that they don't have vehicles. So oftentimes, mm -hmm. uh, some of our underclassmen may find themselves in vulnerable situations because they've made contact or they've been in contact with someone who is of an upper class status and have a vehicle or have a mode of transportation or even financial ability that they're not able to provide mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. And that person now becomes a source of power and they're able to control because they can withhold their support or their help or their assistance from this person um, absent of them giving in and that kind of goes into a situation where coercion oftentimes plays a part in some of the communication but power and control is a very real thing mm -hmm. uh, very very prevalent and often a large a large part of acquaintance rape situations mm -hmm. the uh, understanding uh, of who one is okay and mm -hmm. I, I think of you know uh, the influence of parents, of family, mm -hmm. and you leave them to come to school here. Most people come to school here, they're away from home, and, but they don't always remember who they are supposed to be in terms of integrity, in terms of morals, mm -hmm. and this kind of opens the door to these problems of sexual assault sometimes, don't they? Absolutely. The absence of support that's directly available to a student um, really puts a student in a place where they have to find themselves. Mm -hmm. And all that they've learned uh, before they, as they were growing up and developing in the, uh, the, all of the things that their parents and their families have instilled in them become a part of them becoming independent adults. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. really college life and is, a, is, a part, is a part of that process. Mm -hmm. And so while they're learning to survive without being able to just come home after school when they're in high school mm -hmm. and asking their parents for what they need, they now have to learn how to survive and be okay. safe without having that direct contact with someone. And they have to learn how to do that on their own while still embracing those morals and values that mm -hmm. have been instilled right, in them. Right. I read an interesting statistic and that statistic uh, indicated that 40% of rapes on college campuses are not only unreported, but the rape victim tells nobody. Mm -hmm. But there's some consequences to that beyond the, 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 uh, the perpetrator getting off and getting away with it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, aren't there psychological, possible physical, I, I, I understand that, you know, the chances of a rape victim committing suicide, mm -hmm. you know, is, is higher than other people. I mean, aren't there consequences to not reporting? There are consequences to not reporting. Um, the, the victim suffers, the survivor suffers. Um, and any way you look at it, they, they will suffer. They will survive, but they will suffer. And by not reporting, I think the biggest issue with not reporting is that you are now allowing a predator to mm -hmm. repeat this offense again. And just knowing that reporting is the first opportunity to stop this mm -hmm. person from doing this to someone again should give the survivor some relief. Mm -hmm. And they are not allowing themselves to have that, at least that one sense of relief. Mm -hmm. Another, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But we have one minute left. I, I want you to, I want you to look in the camera whichever camera's on. I'm not sure which camera's on, but you're talking to the students. Mm -hmm. And I want you to communicate to them very quickly. If they report rape, how is this university, and specifically our police department, our counseling department, our student affairs, how are they going to be there to help them? If you report a rape to any reporting party, any party on this campus, to include the police department, uh, student affairs, the office of Title IX, judicial affairs, counseling. All of these departments have personnel working in those departments who are prepared to support you, 
to assist you, to get you uh, to a place where you can move beyond what has happened to you. We'll make sure that you have the, uh, your mental, emotional, psychological needs are met. If you would like to uh, file a police report, the police report will be filed. Uh, we will investigate it to the fullest extent of the law. Uh, the Judicial Affairs Department and the Title IX Department are very well trained personnel and they will do everything that they can to ensure that you continue to have a safe and successful experience on our campus. And that is the overall um, expectation uh, uh, that you should have from the entire campus at large and the Department of Student Affairs and specifically the police department who I represent. Okay, that's it. You've heard it from our, our Lieutenant Joy Simmons here. Uh, don't keep it to yourself, you know, report it, okay? Because it's important for you and it's important uh, to send a message to perpetrators that they can't get away with this kind of thing. Thank you so much there, Lieutenant Simmons, for being on my show. I got to get you back on again, too. And thank you. Thank you for joining us for another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. Everyone have a good day.